welcome to TTC Cars. I'm Craig. Yeah, I'm Brian. And we've got a good one today, Brian. We've got the Mazda 3 hatch, baby. Yeah. And this one's loaded out, which means turbo 2.5 liter, 310 foot pounds of torque, 320 with 93 octane. And what is it, 250 horsepower? Yes. Yeah, that's not enough for two and a half liters, just personal opinion, but it is what it is. This thing was shared with the CX-9 all the way down to the Mazda 3. It had to do a lot of things. Mazda's not a huge company. They didn't have R&D for different turbos for every one. It freaking has some shove though. That torque is no joke. It's paired with a six-speed automatic, which is pretty good. Um, it's not a dual clutch or anything like that, but it is reliable and tried and true and shifts great. And it has all-wheel drive, which that means this thing can handle snow and sleet and ice and all that kind of stuff. So if you're living in an urban area with inclement weather, got you covered. Not a problem here. So you're thinking Subaru, think Mazda. You might have some style and some nice things to go with it that you wouldn't find in Subaru. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's start with the nose, Craig. Corporate nose. And I'll be completely honest, I think the 3 wears this face the best. We see this thing on the the 3, the CX-30, the CX-5, the CX-9, all the way around. This one's actually the smallest version because the car is the smallest. I think it looks good. This one on top trim has everything blacked out. You've got blacked out wheels. And again, headlights, man. Come on and check these out. We know Mazda's staple is that they are the best headlights in the business across all brands. That rings true here as well. They guide at night when you steer, and they're not like notch. They're very fluid. They feel natural, and they just... God, they might as well forget your KC offer lights. Baja trucks need this. That's what they need. Bring it around. Paint. This looks like white, and man, the sun's not out right now, so you can't see it, but the metallic flake in this is incredible. Mazda's paint game is on point, too. Wheels and tires. These are Bridgestone Terenzas. They're EL 440s, and they are 245, I'm sorry, 215, 45, 18s. They actually handle well. They're really quiet on the highway, and uh, they're exactly what they need to be. They're a luxury tire. They're not going to win any autocross races or anything like that, but they are quiet. They have good grip in the rain, and the wheels are not so big that it rides harsh. The ride and drive is pretty good on this, and we'll talk about that more when we do that. Bring it around. The look. Why would you get the hatch over the sedan, Craig? Because it looks cool. Exactly, and that's what this is. And you see all this right here? This is called not window, and that means the blind spot is horrendous. But that's okay. I don't think this is for families. This thing is for the, I've got a good job, I'm out of college now, I want something that's nice to commute in and is luxurious as heck and looks cool and bespoke. That's what this is. Don't think um, Accord or Civic or Jetta. That's not what this is. Think small Mercedes, BMW X1, uh, BMW 2 Series. That's what it's competing with, and it's really a bargain when you think about that. But way. because it's a Mazda, you might be able to talk your company into tricking your company to buying it for you as a company car. This That's is the true. one to get. That's true. There's no pretension with this. Um, let's do our fuel door check, Craig. Ready for that? And uh, we know it's a typical Mazda. There's not a capless system, but extra points for not pulling a Toyota on us. You can just open it from outside the car at the pump. You don't have to hit a button inside. I like that a lot. Bring it around to the rear. I think the styling, get a good three quarter on this crate. It's got the wing on top. Looks like a backwards hat a little bit. It's got the good looking tail lights and you have down here real exhaust tips. I like it. I think it's a good look. It's been around for a few years now, but it wears it well and you keep the black theme of the lower valence looking like the front one and you've got the good Mazda logo in the back. None of that matters. Let's get her in the hood and see what's happening. All right, Craig, you see all that juice over there, that power station? Yeah. Ain't got nothing on this. We got 186 kilowatt hours of power, which means 250 horsepower, 310 foot pounds of torque. This is the Skyactiv G Turbo. We've seen this thing a bunch, and you can pop this guy off. It's really good for sound editing, but it's just a four bang underneath it. There's your turbo out back right there. It is calibrated to, to haul around, like we said, a CX-9 worth of weight, and that's why the torque has been prioritized over the horsepower. And you'll hear me, hear me bellyache about that when we drive it because the turbo just runs out of steam right around 45, 4800 RPM. You almost need to shift it sooner. We have found if you do that, it is faster. Um, all that said, this is a unit that's been out for a few years now. There's no hiccups. There's no concerns with it. It's tried and true. And if you're not looking for a hot hatch, you're going to love it. In terms of luxury, it's the torque really comes into play there. It's smooth and supple, and it gets mileage. Let's take the interior. All right, Brian, enough power talk. Let's get into the interior of the Mazda 3 because the hatch is functional. That's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it is kind of functional. We get some room back here. You do get some hatchback functionality. Brian, you can pull this off, and then you can fold the seats down, and then all of a sudden, you're in business. So, I mean, that is some of the functionality. You'd have to move the seats forward, but then, you know, right. you can't actually... Now you've got a lot of space you can put in here. You can put a mountain bike in here pretty easy. That is pretty cool. Yeah. So there is something to it. I do wish this was a car you would want to take to the track because you could carry your... Tires your, and jacks. Yes, yeah, you could carry that no. here if you wanted On to. So. so let's uh, check out the rear seat. Okay. 
All right, Ryan, trying to check out the rear seat. Before we get there, though, check out the door pockets. Um, you get room for a small micro hydro flask, so I hope you're not doing a whole lot of hiking in the back seat. Um, you do get a nice grab handle, piano black, very nice and mature looking. You get the red and the soft touch, even in the back. A lot of car manufacturers skimp on that part. Ooh. But, Brian, look how small this window is. You see that? You know what's going to happen? Hmm. If you have kids, you're going to get car sick. Uh, ask me on now. Okay, let's get to the back and let's check out the room. I'm sitting behind myself right here. I'm 5'9", and you know, it's not terrible. I actually have some headroom, which, and some, well, oh, I say some, well, it's kind of mm. tight. Mm. But anyways, look at this. You do get a nice center armrest. That is nice. That and doesn't flop off. to the bottom, yeah. and that's nice. And up here, if we move the center armrest up, we get... Look at the leather though. The this leather's nice. really nice. Yeah, let's yeah. see what kind of room you have headroom wise. Wait, and, I have to uh, do this? Huh? Okay. Let's do this. Get in here. All right. I'm sitting behind you driving, which yeah. means I have some light. Well, well not really. Okay. Okay. Well, anyways, it's, it's not a family car, so. No, let's, no, let's no. Just no definitely not a family car. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. But look how nice it is. All right, Brian, checking out the interior, the front part of the interior. Look, you get the nice Bose speaker grill, which is nice and chromey, and you get a nice door pocket for a Hydro Flask full size that might fit. Let's move on into the cab because it's raining on me and I don't want to get wet. So, um, good rain protection. I'm not wet at all. You do get a moonroof. That part's nice. Um, but, Brian, this is a really good spot to be. We're going to talk about this more, I'm sure, on the ride and drive. But say what you will about the hot hatch or it's not, we wish it was sportier, whatever. This is a awesome place to be and if you like the low slungness of a hatch or a car versus the crave for the crossovers now that are too high mazda's got you this man. is it yeah. this is where you need to be um i wish this you could roll your own gears good news is mazda 3 does let you do that if you get the na motor and that part would be nice other than that it's just like everything else mazda's been doing for a while it is beautiful in here you get nice soft touch contrasting materials and colors a beautiful instrument cluster that is easy to read in all the mazas including this one i love that you can actually easily turn off all your aids your driver aids you just hit this button and it's just off that's awesome thank you we need Ma more cars major with points on that that memory seats is nice you get the uh, commenters i need uh, viewers i need your help here what is this for what does anyone ever use it for it's in almost every make and model and i don't know what to do with it except put brian's wallet in there so um Cup holders are up front, a little controversial. Brian and I have argued about that. Should it be back here? Well, who knows, whatever. But you get the wonderful dial and rotary knob that is it works. also controversial, Brian, but I love because it's simple. Once you get into it and after a day, you're like, well, that makes more sense than touch, believe it or not. Enough of that, though. Let's get on the road and see what it does. All right, Brian, we're in the Mazda 3 Turbo, the closest thing they yeah, got to a baby. hot hatch. All wheel drive, hit it. Not Mazda speed, load it. Oh, wait. Sport Road. Okay, Whoa. there we go. Front wheel drive. <coughs> yeah, uh, that's the wheezy and the turbo. And 60 and 6.38. Okay. Off camera after multiple runs, avoiding some heat. So mm. had a lot of 8 to 60s. And that's because we ran this thing out a little bit before we actually filmed it. Uh, and uh, so heat soaking turbos are a thing. That's a little bit, yeah. I was going to say, it's a little bit of a, just a modern turbo thing. It's right. Just, yeah. yeah, that's not so, Mazda yeah. specific, by the way. Let's be very right, clear right. about yeah. that. happens all the time. Um, but yeah, well, can we just start out with how freaking nice this thing is to, yeah, uh, to spend time in, as so, you said, in the interior? Yes. Yeah, so, so, look, I, we jokingly started off that launch with uh, this is the closest thing that Mazda has to a hot hatch. Now, now that we've said that, let's just get that completely out of your mindset. This Thank is you. not Thank a you. hot hatch. It is not at all. And look, I've got some history with this car. I've got some beef with this car. <laughs> it has angered me in the past because look, we've driven Mazda Speed 3s. We've spent time with that. We've driven regular Mazda hatches that are like so engaging to drive. And you get into this and your expectation's a little too high. Well, yeah, right? because you hear all-wheel drive, turbo, all those things, right? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Don't think that. No. Think like, uh, what's the Mazda GLA, CLA hatch thing? Yeah. Not Ma I'm sorry, Mazda, a Mercedes. Oh, think yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Think the BMW X1, yeah, right? Don't right. even think hatch. Like this yeah. happens to be a hatchback shape, right. but the CX-30 makes a little more sense to me. Right. Because it's just this a little bit taller with some cladding. Yeah. It's identical body-wise, and that makes a little more sense. But it's a nice thing to spend time in. The interior appointments are great, and the steering, let's get back to driving, is awesome. Yeah. It has Coleman stamp all over it. It's linear and it loads up. The dampers are static. They're not some magnetic ride control, and they are perfect. They're just right. Yeah. 
right? Now, it does have a torsion rear end instead of a multi-length like it used to have on the previous gen. And they do a good job at balancing that and saving some weight. Um, but look, let's just be honest. The automatic is a letdown. Uh, it's, it's not quick to shift and the turbo runs out of steam past about 4,800 RPM. But well, Mazda still puts the shift pattern in the right spot. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. And I don't like this better than their new shifter they're putting. I, yes, I completely agree. And it's very, very smooth. So as a thing, I'm like, if you're not serious about hot hatch, this is going to be a great car. You're right. going to love it. And look, here's what Mazda's done. They've given us a 2.5 turbo, six-speed automatic in everything they make. Exactly. The 3, the 630, the CX-5, right. the 6 and Ex basically Except for the 690 now. So they have that. Sure. Well, right. But so what, what you can do now is you can, I like that power plant, I like that turbo fuel, I yeah. like the punchiness of that. It's got some shove too. Um, what package do I want it in? So 630 is a little bit taller, 65 is a little bit even taller than that, 69 is bigger. This is the most sporty feeling of those, I guess. I guess. So if you like the lower slung look and you like that feel, this is the one to get. I think you nailed it, it literally is. Which body do you want, and do you want the turbo or not? Because you can get in yeah. all of them. What body style and package do you want around that power plant? Right, so let's run that backwards now. If you were to buy a Mazda 3 today, Craig, what's your configuration? Oh, well, the good news is Mazda still makes the right configuration of this, and that is mm -hmm. the naturally aspirated uh, six-speed manual front-wheel drive Thank only. you, the non-turbo, that's the one to get, because that's we've driven that, that motor a lot in other cars. It is happy to rev. It's so a good, yep, we, good motor, and it's fun right. to drive. And their manuals are always, always excellent. They are best in the market. I think better than Honda's. Fight me about that in the comments. Um, seating position wise, I'm a big dude. I am not compromised to get headroom. I'm just sitting how I want and it's awesome. Yes. All right. All that covered. I don't think there's a whole lot else to talk about other than it's yeah. just a really nice car to commute in. It's a great spot to be. Forget hot hatch. You're going to love this thing. It's Absolutely. a great, great car. Yep. Thanks for watching. See you next time.